City Center Church. Man, there is so much happening in our church. And I want to take a moment to say welcome all those who may be new to our church or have been with our church for a long time. Come on, if you're all the way on the East Coast, man, last weekend we had another preview service uh, on the East Coast. Thanks to Nate and Val and the entire team. They did an amazing job. Great turnout. Uh, God is just doing so many crazy things uh, with, uh, man, a second location all the way on the East Coast. And here in Berkeley, man, we're getting ready August 15th next weekend. Um, Come on, say it. Next weekend, we have our first pre-gathering in our new building, in our space. I want to encourage you at 1030, you don't want to miss it. Show up, bring your friends uh, and family members. We've got child care. We've got, we're going to have some uh, cupcakes just celebrating the time. Uh, We're just excited to see all that God has in store. Also, we are starting a new series August 15th called Rethink Church, Jesus Did. Man, we believe that Jesus rethought the religious things of the time when he was there, questioning uh, the things within the faith and within the church that were hindrances to relationship with him. And so, man, we're starting and kicking off that series, Rethink Church, Walking Through the Book of Mark. I want to encourage you uh, to be there. But this week, Come on, all my West Coast people, man, so glad you're here, our East Coast and all in between. But this week, we're ending our series, Get Wisdom. It has been 10 weeks of this series, but I believe, come on, we need more wisdom. Although we're only going for 10 weeks um, and are finishing this week, come on, raise your hand. If you're in the comments, put it in the comments or social, uh, Facebook, YouTube. Man, how many of you guys would say you need wisdom? wisdom. Come on, if my wife were standing here right now, she would say, Ray, you need more wisdom. I need more wisdom for my daily life. And so today we're ending our series, Get Wisdom. And this week is this, don't take the shortcut. Come on, you'll probably see it under, uh, underneath uh, in the comments, but that is our title for today, Don't Take Shortcuts. As we've been journeying through the book of of Matthew uh, in the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus is leading and guiding his followers. I believe the encouragement as we're ending the Sermon on the Mount is don't take shortcuts. Come on, how many of you guys have ever taken a shortcut in your life and it didn't end up the way you wanted it to? But I want to start with Matthew 7, 13 through 15, and I want you to hear Jesus's words of wisdom with this idea of shortcuts. And this week, we're using a different translation. We're going to be using the translation of the message, but I want to encourage you at, uh, throughout this next week, read through the NL- NLT version, and I believe if you couple the two, you'll see some great knowledge that God has for us. Verse 13 through 14 in Matthew chapter 7, this is what Jesus says to his followers. Come on, to you who says, man, I'm impassioned about God, or I want to learn, or I want to grow, or maybe you're new to faith and you jumped into our gathering today. I want to encourage you also that there's no shortcuts in life. Come on, we all know it. But here's what 13 and 14 says. It says, don't look for shortcuts to God. I love that. Come on, if you're listening in Facebook, YouTube, throw it in the comments, but don't look for shortcuts to God. And he says this, come on, we're all in the marketplace in different areas of our ministry or our jobs. And he says, the market is flooded with a surefire, easygoing formulas for a successful life or weight loss journey. Come on, you ever been there? It's like, hey, if you do this, you will lose weight or you will make money this way. And some men, you will get to God or you'll have faith or you'll have a better life this way. But the message version says it so well. Don't go for these easygoing formulas for a successful life that can be practiced in your spare time. Jesus goes on, he says, don't fall for that stuff. Come on, I encourage you today. Don't fall for the shortcuts of life. Don't fall, fall for the shortcuts in relationships, in, uh, in, in growing spiritually or mentally or intellectually. Like there are no shortcuts. And Jesus is encouraging us, don't fall for that stuff. Even though the crowds of people do, man, the world is going to take shortcuts and it's gonna be the easy route. But he says the way to life to God is vigorous and requires total attention. Come on, he says the way to life, the way to God, because God is life, 
is vigorous and it's it, sorry it is vigorous and requires total attention i'd encourage you today that god is challenging each and every one of us to don't take the shortcuts to life the easy route but it takes vigorous uh uh, fertitude. It takes um, and requires total attention. I remember uh, in my life, me and my wife, we were on a trip and uh, we got lost. Anyone ever got lost before? Uh, we got lost. And as we got lost, um, me, uh, the guy who wants to be on time, anyone like that where you're like, man, we're going on a trip. I've got my time schedule. I got when I want it to be complete or when I want to arrive at this point, then this point. And I remember we got lost and to go around was going to take, oh my gosh, like two hours out of the way. And I was like, this is crazy and ridiculous. And so what did I try to do? I tried to take a shortcut because the way the highway worked was the highway was like this and we had taken the wrong route where we should have gone this way, but we went up this way. And so there was this, um, this uh, the highways was kind of like a U and then there was this, this space in between and there was no route to get through it. But I'm like, there's gotta be a way. Anyone ever thought that? Man, there's gotta be a way. There's gotta be a shortcut to get from here to here and not do the work of going all the way around. And so so we go and we, we try to do this and literally we're just going, we're in these back roads going, I mean, all over the place. And then our GPS stops working. And I remember just thinking, man, why did I choose to try to take the shortcut, the easy route? Because maybe life, right? Circumstances sometimes causes us to say, man, we can take the shortcuts. But Jesus is saying there's no shortcuts. And I remember uh, we finally made it through but I remember thinking, man, I shouldn't have taken the shortcut. And I believe that's the wisdom that Jesus wants to give us today, that there's no shortcuts in life. There's no shortcuts to, to growing spiritually. There's no shortcuts to growing intellectually and mentally. And so here's the question. Our main question for today is this. Have you ever taken a shortcut in life that actually wasn't worth it? I want you to think about that today. Come on, no matter if you're a believer or not, I just want to think, I want you to think about the, the easy routes, right? The, the quick, the get rich quick schemes or to get healthy quick schemes, right? Think about a time that you've taken a shortcut and it actually wasn't worth it. And so today, as we're ending our series on Get Wisdom, my encouragement is that Jesus is challenging and encouraging and inviting each and every one of us. Come on, no matter where you're listening at, if you're on Facebook or YouTube or uh, on our website, like no matter where you're listening at, Jesus is, in, is it inviting us into a life, but there's not a shortcut to get there. And so as we uh, end this Sermon on the Mount, I want to read a few passages of scripture here and then just give you four application points. So Matthew 7, 21 through 29, this is what Jesus says. And again, we're using the message version today. 21, he starts and he says, knowing the correct password, saying master, master, for instance, isn't going to get you anywhere with me. This is Jesus talking. But he says, what is required is serious obedience, which is difficult. Come on, you guys know what I'm talking about. That is difficult to have serious obedience to following the ways of Jesus. But he says, doing what my father wills. So right, what is required is serious obedience, doing what my father wills. And he says, I can see it now at the final judgment, thousands strutting up to me and saying, master, come on, we preached the message. We bashed the demons, our spiritual, our super spiritual projects had everyone talking, right? We're, we're, um, we're uh, showing and, um, and bringing before Jesus all the things that we've done, all the things that we've worked for. And he says this, and do you know what I'm going to say? You missed the boat. You did, sorry, all you did was use me to make yourselves important. I remember reading this and thinking, ah, like that's a hard statement. But is it not true? But he goes on, all you did was use me to make yourselves important. You don't impress me one bit. You, you're out of here. In 24, he goes on, he says this, these words I speak to you are not 
incidental additions to your life. I love that. These words that I speak are not incidental additions to your life. He goes on, home uh, homeowner improvements to your standard of living. So he's saying, man, these are not just additions that you add to your life or some improvements that you make. They are foundational words. Come on, wherever you're listening in, can someone throw that in the comments? They are foundational words, words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter who built his house on solid rock. It goes on, the rain poured down, the river flooded, a tornado hit. Come on, this last year, did anyone have a tornado hit? Or maybe you're still in the midst of a tornado. But he says, but nothing moved that house. It was fixed to the rock, right? Who's the rock? Jesus. And verse 26 says this, but if you just use my words in Bible studies and don't work them into your life, you are like a stupid carpenter. Yes, that's in there. You are like a stupid carpenter who built his house on the sandy beach. And he goes on, and when a storm rolled in and the waves uh, came up, it collapsed like a house cards and he ends the sermon of the mount this way he says and when jesus concluded his address the crowds burst into applause right because he rethought church he was rethinking the norm of religion at that moment and so the crowds were like man what he's talking about i want that that's real and so they said they had never heard teaching like this it was apparent that he was living everything he was saying. I want to say that again. It was apparent that he was living everything he was saying, right? Because there's no shortcuts. And he says, quite a contrast to their religious teachers. This was the best teaching they had ever heard. Man, let me pray for us, and then I'll give you guys some quick uh, points and some next steps. Father, today, I pray that your word would engage and transform our hearts and our minds that we may hear and receive all that you want to speak to us. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. God, what you want to say to our hearts. God, and what you want to show us today. We love you and praise you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. There are no shortcuts in life. Come on, if someone is listening in, can you put that in the comments? There are no shortcuts in life and there are no shortcuts to God. There's not an easy route. It's easier to do what everyone else is doing. So here's our main point for today. God can't be an addition to our lives, but the foundation it's built on. Come on. I'm going to say that one more time. God can't be an addition to our lives, but the foundation it's built on. Come on. One more time. Can someone put this in the comments? God can't be an addition to our lives, but the foundation that is built on. And so when Jesus is the foundation of your life, these four things are evident. Man, when Jesus is the foundation to our lives, these four things are evident. Number one, we are obedient to his words and will. Come on, here's a wisdom point I wanna encourage you with today, right? Uh, In order for God to be the foundation that our lives are built on, we are obedient to his words and his will. Number two is this, that when Jesus is the foundation of your life, of my life, we live to make his name famous over our own. Come on, I'm going to say it again. When Jesus is the foundation of our lives, we live to make his name famous over our own. Come on, that's a hard statement. It's hard for me to make that statement. Am I okay with making Jesus' name famous over my own? But that's what it means when Jesus is the foundation of our lives. Number three is this, we invite the Holy Spirit to transform every part of us. Come on, there's no shortcuts to living for God. There's no shortcuts for allowing God's Holy Spirit to transform us. There's no shortcuts to being true followers of Jesus. And part of that is inviting the Holy Spirit to transform every part of us. Of us, every part, not just additions, right? In that passage, we're not just adding on additions to our life, but we're saying, Holy Spirit, I invite you 
to transform every part of me. And then lastly, and you heard it in here, right? The crowds were applauding. They, were, they had heard a teaching that was different than what they had heard before because Jesus' life truly displayed it. But number four is this. We apply Jesus' teachings to our lives daily, to our lives daily. Uh, as we listen to this, and I know we're just starting this conversation, and that's why the after party is one of the best places for you to jump into. And this week, we're going to jump right into that after I speak uh, today. But here's our next steps before we jump out of here. How do we apply this wisdom to our lives? As we look over the last 10 weeks, I would encourage you to go back and watch it back on YouTube all the different weeks to then say, how do we apply this, this wisdom? But point number one to this, man, how do we apply this wisdom? I want to encourage you, read Matthew 7 this week and write down what Jesus is trying to teach you. Read Matthew 7 this week and write down what Jesus is trying to say to you. And when we all show up on August 15th, we're going to take some time to apply this wisdom, to ask the question, what is Jesus saying to each and every one of us about Matthew 7? So again, I want to encourage you as you come into the building, do that. Number two is this, write in a journal or your phone notes this week, what is stopping you from making Jesus the foundation of your life? I'd encourage you as you're looking at taking this next step, applying this wisdom, I want to encourage you, take a journal or your phone uh, this next week, and I want you to, to write down what's stopping you from making Jesus the foundation of your life. And then lastly, number three, next week, come on, on August 15th, we have our first pre-service gathering for launching our Berkeley Hub. And I want to encourage you, man, you want to be a part, come on in. You don't have to RSVP. You can show up August 15th uh, at our Shattuck Hub in Berkeley. We want to encourage you uh, to be a part. Man, this has been such a great series. As we are finishing out this series, Get Wisdom. Man, I think the biggest thing that Jesus wants to say to each and every one of us is to apply this wisdom to our daily lives. Hey, next week, I am excited. We're starting a new series, Rethink Church, Jesus Did, as we walk through the book uh, of Mark. And so, man, right now we're getting ready to jump into our after party. And maybe you heard something from the four points that we discussed today, right? Like we are, um, when Jesus is the foundation of our lives, we are obedient, obedient to his words and will. We live to make his name famous over our own, right? We invite the Holy Spirit to transform every part of us. And we apply Jesus's teachings to our lives daily. Man, those points are going to be in the Zoom link. They're going to be in the comments below. But I want to encourage you today, apply this wisdom to your everyday life. And maybe you want to talk more about this. Right now, we're going to jump into our after party. And our after party is just an opportunity for each and every one of us to discuss and to talk about what we just discussed in uh, the message. So man, I'm excited. You don't want to miss out. Let's jump into this after party and discuss all the points that we just talked about. Man, so glad that you're with us this week. I am so excited for what the future holds. Can't wait to see you next weekend in person. Man, have a great week and I'll see you in the after party.